Los Nachos Amigos, and welcome to Record Breakers, a book club for music, a gathering of friends, talk about music, sharing albums with each other. I'm Peter Ray, your man with no plan. Here with me, of course, is my crew, my regular team. We've got Brett. It's a it's a book club for music, or a music club for books, you find out. Yeah, we've got Patrick. Hello. And we've got Drew. Hi. We're here to talk about music, and uh, the provider of the music this week, the one sharing an album with the crew, with the quorum, is Brett. Brett, what do you got for us this week? Uh, I've got the the album Milo Goes to College by the punk rock band Descendants. Uh, you may have heard of it. You may not have. We're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's some familiarity with you guys. Uh, so, I mean, let's, let's get through the expectations. Uh, Drew, uh, what were your expectations coming into this album? Um, oh, wow. Uh, the, the Descendants, a band I've never heard of before. I had no idea what was, you know, you know, this album's kind of a punk rock classic. If you're into anything pop punk and you were a teenager at one point, or you like melodic bits of, uh, the punk rock and hardcore punk genres, you you probably have heard of these guys a little bit. Um, so I sort of knew what I was getting into, and I was real excited to have an excuse to listen to a lot of Descendants. <laughs> uh, Patrick, what were your expectations? Uh, it's the goddamn Descendants. They're a band I love, although this is not my favorite of their records. It's not like they have a whole lot of terrible ones. Uh so this was uh, sometimes I get to listen to an all new album I've never heard before. And then sometimes like this one, it's a review of an album I just haven't listened to in a few months. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to I'm going to have to uh, make a confession. Uh, I'm going to have to say. Um, I hadn't listened to this record up until we decided to do it on the show. <laughs> I'm going to be that guy that hadn't listened to Milo Goes to College. And I kind of <laughs> was waiting until now to say it because it's like oh it's gonna be a, a softball we've all heard this a million times like yeah yeah <laughs> cool there there's there's one in every group <laughs> well and this album was not readily available from the time of its release until you could start downloading stuff illegally yeah uh, in uh, that's how parts. i got it originally <laughs> yeah. after was great guys. you'd have to know what you were looking for to come across it yeah, so this is definitely a new experience for me, though I, I, I had an inkling inkling uh, of what I, what to expect. Uh, Brett, how would you describe this album musically? Uh, you know, it's it's of its era and of its time. It's uh, what I like to think of uh, the uh, the best in class show dog variety of this style of music of its time. It's a it's an album made by kids um, mostly. Um, but uh, it's a it's it's an album that's that's powered by a sense of drive and energy. Um, it's it's trying to distill down um, what a live punk rock show is, which is not a very easy thing to translate into an album because I a lot of people failed um, at, at trying that. Um, it uh, you know it it's it was something that I was drawn to as a teenager um, because it sounded a lot. It was the prototype um that many people built off of after this album inspired them to go and make their own music um instrumentation is pretty standard for a punk band the only thing that would probably be super noteworthy is that the uh melody is uh is driven by the bass guitar even the vocals follow the bass guitar if you notice maybe that's how you can remember what key you need to sing in is to uh make sure that the guy who's really good at playing the bass is always hitting the notes but the the guitar is more of a secondary filling in a uh, a role, um, you know. Uh, lyrically, I guess that there there are people who latch onto this um, because it's a uh, it is a song of, by teenagers explaining emotions of outcast teenagers in the early '80s. It's definitely of its time, but I guess it holds up pretty well. Um, I didn't latch on to lyrics personally. I would have been Ever. pretty okay if it was in a language I didn't understand. I, uh, I enjoyed it. If it, it was boops and beeps that were being sung, um, that would be cool too. Uh, it's definitely, um, a music that stands on 
the the forward uh, propulsion of energy. Mm-hmm. It is a it is of the era of of punk rock. This would be considered fast. Yes. Uh Drew. What well, what would be the themes elements that catch your attention on this album musically? This is twenty two minutes and thirty two seconds to create an album that is a classic for a reason in the punk rock genre. Um, the Descendants are considered one of those bands that just they came up and they sort of honed in on a sound and sort of pointed it where it needed to go. Um, and that was sort of that melodic hardcore um, pop punk sort of thing that was coming up in the 80s. They sort of put a razor point on it with this album, I think. And it just shows throughout the entire thing. Um, you have that nerdy frontman that is writing the prototypical like pop punk what we consider now the prototypical pop punk songs it's it's something that's easy to as brett said it's sort of easy to latch on to those but you also have um that just crazy um fast sort of hard like harder punk edge to it um but also in this album what you don't expect to get right off the bat is sort of like a surf rock style bravado to some of it um, which is always awesome and always welcome. The Descendants, in my opinion, all the Descendants that I've ever listened to, you sort of hear that little surf rock influence at times, which is a lot of fun. Um, and it was really well done. Um, like Brett said, the bass playing is probably the highlight as far as musicality goes, but you have something that not only was easy to latch onto um for a lot of folks musically but also lyrically you had um other bands doing melodic sounds or in the early 80s um but they were bands like bad religion and the dead kennedys and like that sort of thing and that was like a little bit harsher um in terms of lyrics and then you had other bands that were way harder on the musics like uh the musics um, the music side of things, you had things like the circle jerks or fear and stuff like that. And they were doing much more heavy on the noise bits of, uh, the punk rock. So those were harder to get into, I think for a lot of people, for a lot of different reasons, whereas the descendants sort of stuck in that middle ground. And it was something that is easy to get into, but still had a lot of depth to it, which I think is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick, what would be the themes on this that make up this album for you? Um, this is, this is the roots of a, of a band that I adore this, this you see. So for me and, and like, just to be clear the the album that follows this, I don't want to grow up is one of my favorite records ever. It's fantastic. I, I really, I like pretty much everything the descendants did up until like the mid nineties, even when they, the everything sucks in the mid nineties, the new stuff and the uh, jury's out on, uh, but this album, you really get to hear the evolution from a band without Milo to the band that, you know, that the Descendants ultimately became. And with that, you get you get a lot of the stuff that they've always done, that they always continue to do, like weird little fun little, you know, 30 or 40 second oddity songs, but also like the way I described the descendants for a long time has been the descendants have written a song about every way you've ever felt. That is like, to me, they have a song. They have songs like throughout their catalog that I'm like, I can connect a moment in my life or an experience in my life. And there's a descendant song that is applicable. Like you can, you know, it's something they've, that for me has always been, uh, you know, what, what hooked me. I mean, the first song I ever heard of theirs was silly girl. And, it's like a musical like, XKC. It, yes. And it's also, I mean, they don't, it's not like they have that many records, but you know, they've, they've got, you know, half a dozen now. And like, they've, they've written songs about every way you've ever felt. That is, that is how I feel about them. They very much, and like Milo being a, you know, the, the whole concept of the album is not, 
is that their lead singer is going away to college and they're recording a record before he leaves because Milo ultimately got a PhD in biochemistry and worked in labs and stuff, you know, which is why they don't have 7 million records. They like do one whenever he gets bored of, you know, college and or work, depending on what year it is. And this album, like you hear, you hear like this super raw, super fast punk, which is, I think what Brett loves about it. But also for me, you hear the, the very beginnings of, of the very, the more heartfelt stuff they did later on in their career. But you get really good driving bass that carries everything through. Bill Stevenson is one of the tightest drummers in punk rock. He is, he is very much just perfect for this era of the genre. It's like, uh, the guy from bad religion comes to mind. The guy from Pennywise and Bill Stevenson, like a being super tight, super perfect for what they're doing. And, and it's just really, really good old punk rock. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> this is good foundational punk rock. You see the, the tendrils in, of uh, in so many other things going forward. And it's so good to go, to go back and kind of discover this, uh, with fresh eyes, which is, which is, was a fun experience. Uh, let's talk about some key tracks, Brett. What would be some of the key tracks, uh, to zero in on? Well, I mean, you can, I mean, I don't want to spend too much. This is a short album, so I'll try and keep things short. Um, we'll start off with very short songs. Um, the, like one of the very first songs that I heard, uh, was I want to be a bear. And I, I don't know if I've, or I heard much other than there. Yeah. The, when it comes to, to bands making like crazy, uh, build up songs, um, the, they made a career out or well, they made a few on this album. Um, uh, also I, I believe that, uh, the, I, it, you live the life of reading things forever, but I believe it, that, uh, it's, uh, Tony Edge, as in, uh, uh, the, yeah, I don't have the, uh, the AP style guide for speaking names of things typed out. And you'd be surprised how hard it is to, uh, to Google that and get a good confirming of the pronunciation. But yeah, I, I like it how when they, they come fast, they, they, they go hard and then it snuffs out. Um, the very first descendant song I ever heard in my life as a, as a young child, I was, was Kabuki girl. Um, and, uh, that's, it's a, a song of a lot of, um, downstroke, uh, guitar, uh, a little bit of palm mute thrown in there. Um, but a whole lot of hard stops and it's not your straight up punk rock song. Um, you have to be able to keep time to play, um, play that song. Uh, it's, it's something that is a, it's a time and a place song. It's, it's, you know, it, I have memories of waiting for that to, to download on everybody I knew's computer because I could not transfer it easily from one place to another. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, then, uh, uh, hope is a song that probably eclipses most of what this album did. Um, just in the like the life that it has uh, in every small town opera house or basement haunt where punk rock kids go and play music or kids that listen to Sublime and didn't know that this was a descendant song. Um, but uh, it's it's probably as close to a perfect punk rock song um, of of the era. Uh, it's it's pretty timeless. It speaks to everyone and it uh, it doesn't sound like anything else, really. Um, there are a lot of things that came after this that, that, uh, sort of had that sound, but, uh, you know, for the, the lyrical content juxtaposed with the, the musical musicality of it, uh, makes that a pretty, a pretty hot banger. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Drew, what will be some of the key trucks for you, tracks for you? Key trucks. Um, <laughs> like, like, uh, Brett with Tony Edge. Tony Age, um, my age, um, to start off the record, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that, but um, opening the record on what's basically a sped up surf rock melody on bass guitar with a lot of crunch is kind of brilliant. Um, it's, it sort of in one bass line encapsulates sort of what the Descendants are about to me. Um, especially in this era of the sentence, right? So like it's, it also like pokes at you to like, Hey, maybe, uh, 
Mr. Lombardo has some things to do in the back. And that's all right. Maybe you should take notice. Um, Because a lot of punk rock, the bass just sort of gets left with static root notes and not doing much, right? It Play the root of the chord and play it fast and fill up the uh, low register. And that's your job as a punk rock bass player. Um, but there's a little bit more going on um, in the bass for this. And maybe that's why I like these sentences. Um Parents. I'm going to talk about parents. Um, because there's a song called Parents that is angsty at parents. And then, uh, what, three tracks later, you have I'm Not a Punk. I believe having the angsty song about being mad at authoritative parents is sort of being mad at authorities, what punk rock does. Yeah. And this is not a band to go after cops and the government, mostly. So, um, and then marriage. Um, it's one of those, like, great opining love songs. It just happens to be screamed at you. <laughs> That's really all you can say about that song but it's it's kind of awesome for that um there's something there's a soft spot in my heart for like the weird songs that on the surface you don't think they're love songs and then they turn out oh wait maybe they are yeah. um and this one sort of is perfect for that yeah uh i like i like because uh, i was reading up on some stuff and and i like the description on uh on on i'm not a punk from uh because that's a that's a lombardo written track uh, and who was basically how? Let me see. I have it here. I'm not a punk. Re- I'm not a punk. Reflected his disinterest in being part of the anarchic, uh, destructive aspect of the punk scene. The whole he quote the whole that whole thing turned me off. I just want to play the music and do it at, as best as I could, and had had a lot of fun doing that. It's like I'm not a punk. I want to be my own person, which is the most punk you could be, I think, which is really cool. Uh, I agree. Uh, Patrick, what would be the, some of the key tracks for you? Um, I'm not a loser. Uh, that's just, that's like a classic Descendants song. Tons of attitude, possibly a little homophobia, but I'm going <laughs> to chalk it up to this being the very early eighties. Or um, it's a song that's not sung in first person. Yeah. Yes. It's, that's an, a key. it's also, yeah. Or well, at least not sung. Uh, uh, he's, he, the, the, the singer is not the narrator. <laughs> yeah. Uh parents. Uh that is the teenageiest teenage angst that has ever angsted. Uh, but also like like it very much fits with with like the fact that they're genuinely teenagers at this time and when you're a teenager even if you have really good parents sometimes you don't like them. That's the nature of being a teenager because they disagree with you and you think you're right because you're a teenager. It just it very very much uh, um, you know, epitomizes that feeling. Uh, Suburban Home, uh, just a fucking catchy Descendants song. And that is, I think, one of the things that I love about them is, is they, no one really questions whether or not the Descendants are punk. Like people question later pop punk bands like Blink-182, for example. They're, they're debatable sometimes. Uh, the Descendants are a fucking punk band, but they still know like how to write a catchy fucking song. Um, and I also just, the, the sort of, uh, it, it sort of encapsulates the story of Milo, who I just find to be an interesting character because again, kid in a punk band, went to college, got out of college, was in a punk band again, uh, went and got a PhD in biochemistry, was in a punk band again. Like this is like, this is someone who struggled his whole life with growing up and be trying to grow up and not be a normal, boring, shitty adult. Like they literally, you know. 20 or 20 years after this wrote a song about it or 15 years after this wrote a song about trying not to grow up to be a shitty adult. And then hope this is the song that feels like a descendant song to me. This would fit on any of the next three albums. It really, it's where I think you see, you know, when when you, when a band's recording their first record, you usually, you often get several years worth of songwriting because it's everything they've written up into that point. And you could, I'm going to guess hope was written relatively late in the game. Cause it very much feels like the way they went after this. And it, uh, it, it just, it hits me right in my descendants place. It's a great song. And, uh, you know, goes up there in the pantheon of great descendant songs. 
Yeah, there's some great tracks on there. Uh, a lot of very short tracks, and it just it's classic punk rock right there uh, with all those tracks. Uh, let's bring it back around the horn uh, to talk about some conclusive thoughts. Uh, Drew, what would be your conclusive thoughts on this album? Oh, like I said up front, um, the Descendants are one of those bands that, um, while some people may have misgivings about some of their later work, um, they're a band that their influence is sort of felt far and wide. Um, they're a band that's just really good at what they do, what they did, um, what they set out their goals to be. Um, like Patrick said, it's really catchy stuff that came from a genre that at that time the the more hardcore punk like fast punk rock thing was not doing catchy um which i think is really cool if you're out there and like pd you haven't listened to um a mile goes to college or much of the descendants descendants at all but maybe you listen to bands uh, let's say blank 182 um even though their later records are god awful um Except for the new one. The new one's all right, but oh god, oh god, I couldn't that. disagree with you more. Oh None my god, spaceships! I hate everything about the new record. I I like the new Blink record, but let's say you like them, or you like, uh, say a band like The Wonder Years or something like that. You and you haven't listened to much of this end of the punk rock spectrum or pop punk spectrum, the the eighties where it was like bands like bad religion and the descendants were sort of adding like really well-crafted melodies in the punk rock and catchy hooks and things like that into a very decidedly punk rock sound. This is an album that I think deserves to be heard. Um, when Brett brings punk rock, it's usually punk rock that is, there's a reason, um, why he brings it. And it, usually a reason is very very prominent and that's mile goes to college is kind of a classic i ain't bringing s&m airlines i'm bringing milo's milo goes to college <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow uh, that's reference jesus uh patrick what would be some of your what would be your conclusive thoughts on this record i hadn't listened to this record in a while because again i prefer kind of the three or four albums that came after this, but it's still, it's really good. You get to hear, uh, where, uh, where the descendants come from. And like t- to go back to it, to sort of what Brett said, the reason I heard descendants, and this is going back to freshman year in college, uh, podcasts became a thing. And Mark Hoppus from blink One Eighty Two had a podcast. And on the first episode, he basically said the song that got him into punk rock was silly girl by the descendants. And it, you know, it, my, my, uh, obsession ran from there. Once I started listening to them, I'm like, Oh my God, these guys are the best. So, uh, listen to this record and then listen to all the other records from the eighties that the descendants did. Cause they're all really good for their own reasons. But this is, it's very foundational. If you like any bit of punk rock that came after this, I feel like you, this is worth going back to listen to because you'll probably find something you like in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I definitely enjoyed my listens to it, and I was able to, you know, like, it was able to be something that could give me energy and motivation to, say, build a bookshelf, and <laughs> or, you know, do something around the house, blasting the music, you know, and it was just a really cool listen to kind of go back to the foundation of a lot of the punk rock sounds that I, I've enjoyed in my time that were more of the, of the later groups, and uh and I'm glad I I'm glad I it, it I had the the I'm glad I was given the opportunity and forced to finally you know uh, go check out this album that y'all had mentioned multiple times that I kept forgetting to check out. <laughs> uh, so you know I'm I'm happy for the experience. I have to say it was a great record. Uh, Brett, ultimately, what would be your conclusive thoughts on this album? Um, uh, this, this album is something that I, uh, that it's a good thing. It's very short. I can go to listen to it once and be like, okay, yeah, uh, that, that, that makes me hold on to, you know, at least some hope that my entire, all the taste in music that I had as a child 
wasn't I, I'm a garbage person listening to garbage music and I have yet to grow to the age where I can admit that it was garbage. This is not garbage music. This is not garbage at all. No, there's nobody with red hair on this record. Uh, yeah. Um, but my relationship with Descendants as a whole pretty much begins and ends with this album. Um, it's more the bands that uh, heard this album and were like, hey, I want to do that that I went into later um, or went I was into before. But yeah, it's uh, th- that's more my my scene. But this is this is a very neatly tied up package. Um, much like how I say that every comedian was always funnier when they were on the smack or the Coke, um, punk rock is at at its best when it's made by young people. Um, and, uh, especially when young people are trying to put into words, things about emotions that then their brains being pumped with hormones and trying to, uh, make something of a creative nature and putting it out and having it be something that is widely acclaimed by critics and peers, um, you know, you can look all over and find people who were greatly, uh, you know, inspired by, by this and, uh, other albums. But this is, uh, this is one of the highly, most highly regarded albums of the era of the genre, um, for me of all time. And it's, you know, not even as long as track one of, or side one of 2112. Um, you know, at, you know, if you want to find the, or the most, uh, highly, <laughs> yes, if you want to uh, find the the greatest breakdown of this album, you probably won't find it here. Go dig around, uh, but it's not that long. Go listen to it. Yeah, it's a, it won't hurt and might help a lot. Uh, yeah, those are our thoughts on the Descendants. We're gonna get right into our haiku reviews. Okay, you know, give our thoughts in poetic form. Uh, Drew, what is your haiku? A punk rock staple, a sound that inspired many. Biochem comes first. Mm-hmm. Except now, because because uh, uh, apparently uh, Milo Walker because he quit <laughs> like <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> Actually, this well, he said it th- according to Wikipedia. He said it this year. <laughs> it's like ah, oh, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done and researching. He, he, I think he kind of got fired by Dupont. And then, like, just didn't like how he talks about it. Is he just didn't feel like going back into it? Because he was like, uh, whatever. Yeah, he's, he's I'd rather do this full time now. <laughs> he's fifty three now. Fifty three year old man getting his residual check from Epitaph. Yeah, the punk, yeah. <laughs> the punk rock dream. Uh, that, yeah. that was my punk rock dream when I was like fourteen. Yes. I was like, it'd be great if I could have an album on Epitaph that just kept selling and then I didn't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh Patrick, what would be your haiku? Humble beginnings of a band that I adore. Classic SoCal Punk. Mm-hmm. Uh now we got my haiku. Uh foundational sound. I wish I had known of this a whole lot sooner. Uh and Brett, what is your haiku? It's one of the best. I don't care what all you think. It's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, Petey, I told you so. It's only your fault for not listening to me being like, hey, maybe Milo goes to college. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe possibly. Yeah. I know uh, I've made you listen to like space music by weird Frenchmen, but seriously. <laughs> but now I finally got to listen to it. And I'm like, I'm glad I did. Uh, of course, those are our thoughts on. The descendants are just descendants. Yes. Uh, yeah, just descendants. Uh, you can, of course, find it on our Spotify playlist. Play Record Breakers, the home game. Play along at home. I'll follow along. Uh, try to keep that updated as uh, often as I can. I uh, try to do it weekly. Uh, I even have a Google Calendar alert <laughs> uh, to remind me. Um, on that Spotify playlist will be next week's record, and that will be pro- provided by Drew. Drew, what do you what do you got for us next week? Well, I keep I brought a new record uh, last time. I thought I might continue that again. Um, I brought this guy up before uh, during Hip Hop Month. I brought him up the first time with his album Camp. Um, his new record, uh, not really hip hop. Um, doesn't really rap on the record at all. 
mostly um, does singing. Uh, a little bit of glockenspiel work. Um, but you may know him as uh, Troy Barnes. You may know him from his uh, stint in uh, Derek Comedy. Coming up, you might know him as Lando Calrissian. Um, but Works on this time. album, he's... But, uh, Jesus, what, y'all got to be interrupting me. Um, <laughs> but on the album, he's known as Childish Gambino going to be awaken my love yes uh i've already heard the record it, it's it's going to be an interesting discussion uh next week to say the least i cannot wait to see here what, Fucking these, guys, weird record. what these guys have to say uh but yeah Fuck. that that is next week's record this is this week's record uh you can of course find us all over the internet Patrick is at the swagger. Brett is a heavy debater at H-I-B-B-I-T-O-I-B-I-B-B-A-R-D. Drew is at exclusive for X. I'm at PD Rave. The show is at four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers. Record breakers podcast.com. Record breakers podcast at gmail.com. If you want to email us, rebelli.net for this and other shows. Rebelli TV on YouTube, on Twitch, on things. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be back on Twitch. I'm just saying it uh, for the sake of it. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're, we're all the place where you can find podcasts. Uh, just look us up. Like, share, subscribe. Do the things. Until next time. Hasta los huevos. Toodaloo.